Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Rico Taro in the 15 minute pool on ICC. Let's play Alakine's Defense. I played this one other time in 15 minute and I won that game. So let's give it another whirl. Rico Taro is 2168. He's sporting a PR in his avatar. I wonder if he's from Puerto Rico. You never know. Um, he has a peak 15 minute rating of 2179. Here we play D6. This is the move. About 180 games played. Pretty good win-loss record. So, knight f3. Um, I think the four pawns attack with f4 is probably the only way to seriously challenge the Alakine's defense. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm alone in that opinion, but I always feel like f4 is the critical try. So, knight f3 just defending the pawn on e5. I, I think I'll just play knight c6. Yeah, and just attack the center. See if we can force them to a decision as far as the e5 pawn goes. Almost always they take. Hmm, he does not take actually, he just plays knight c3. I wonder if the idea is after um, d takes e5 to play d5. Pushing the pawn past and attacking my knight. That very well could be. Well, I can play bishop g4 or bishop f5 if I want. Moreover, I can play g6 is another option. Hmm. Usually people take on d6, so I'm in new territory right now. g6 makes a lot of sense because then I can put my bishop on g7 on the next move and maybe force him to make a decision. But then again, if I play g6, take, c takes, is d5 an issue? Mm, probably not more, more so than it would have been on the last move. Bishop g4, maybe? Okay, I'm going to play bishop g4, actually. And I have an idea. If bishop e2, I will take on e5. And then if d5, I'll play bishop takes f3. And then knight d4. They actually just take here. That makes sense. Um, let's take with the e pawn. I'm a little hesitant to take with the c pawn when my bishop is already out on g4. Because I feel like I might have to give up the bishop pair. So I'm taking with the e-pawn to just play it safer a little bit in the case that um, he starts chasing me with h3 and such. c takes d6 is always going to be the more unbalanced choice, but I feel okay with this option. Now, a lot of times this bishop is kind of like um, overloaded. It's trying to defend both f3 and the c4 square, so hence he plays that move. Now, do I want to play an early d5 or should I wait? Probably I should just castle, so I'll do that. And I expect him to castle as well. He does. So if I play d5 now trying to gain space in the center, he could play c5. And then knight c8, because if knight d7, knight takes d5 is possible. I think what I might want to do is like bishop f6, um, bishop e3, and then d5. And then if c5, play knight c8 and swing the knight out through that e7 square. Looks like a decent idea. So bishop f6. Unless that's premature. No, I think it's okay. Let's play bishop f6. Apply the pressure to the d4 pawn. So if bishop e3, maybe I can even postpone d5 for one more move. Like rook e8. If rook e8, h3, there's this idea like, let's say rook e8, h3, bishop h5. White sometimes may be able to play g4, bishop g6, g5, and try to make this bishop an awkward piece. So I'm a little bit leery of that. Let's actually, let's play d5 right away. We'll go ahead and make this advance in the center. I'm trying to feel my way through this position. In some ways, I think this is more interesting for you guys, the viewers, if I like don't know the line as well. Because, <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to play it on site. And um, I know some ideas, but like move orders and um, uh, adapting to what my opponent will do is sometimes a struggle when you don't play the opening. Okay, so now he plays h3. 
Yeah, and again, if bishop h5, I'm just worried about the prospect of g4 in the future. And I could play bishop e6, but my bishop is kind of just a big pawn on that square. It defends f7 and d5, but isn't doing anything else. Bishop h5 might be all right, though. Bishop h5, g4, bishop g6. If they keep pushing g5, I just drop back to e7. It's a little awkward, but he's weakening himself with that whole idea. The only thing is, like, I can't put the knight on e7 due to g4, bishop g6, g5. I could play bishop f5, but it's pretty similar, I think. I don't really want to take and give up the bishop pair. I think that just kind of hands him a slight edge. Let's do this move and see how he reacts. He has useful moves he can make, like queen d2 and rook c1, moves like that. But as long as we're mindful of the fact that g4, g5 could be problematic, I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, I would just play queen d2 most likely if I were white in this position. Let's say the game goes queen d2, rook e8. Um, let's say rook, let's say rook a d1. Rook might be better placed on d1 than c1. What do we do at that point? Okay, he's going to play this, maybe trying to go b4. I can play a5 to put a stop to that. I probably should. Yeah, let's play a5. No use in letting them play b4 free of charge. Also, if the rook comes to b1, I have bishop g6 to disturb it. So that's a nice perk. Yeah, rook e1, that's the type of useful move I kind of alluded to. Let's play rook e8. Nothing really has changed, so we can play rook e8 quickly. Now what to do for him? Queen d2 again could be played. After which, I've kind of run out of useful moves to play, I'd say. It's high time I move this knight. But um, that would run into the g4 trick once again, so I can't do that. Maybe I'll play h6 in that case. Queen d2, h6. Okay, so he's actually going to play this move and allow me to play bishop g6 if I want. I probably should take him up on that uh, offer. Yeah, let's gain the tempo on the rook. I wonder if he'll play bishop d3 or rook b2. Probably bishop d3 because, I mean, the bishop doesn't have anything to do on the e2 square anymore. In a sense, though, like seeing this move is a relief because now like g4 is never coming with tempo. He's going b4 on the next move, though. I wonder if I can play knight c e or uh, knight c e seven. They're both c knights. Knight a to e seven, and then after b four, trade once, and then play rook into a three. That looks like a pretty decent way of continuing. So I kind of X-ray all his pieces on the third rank here. I don't know. He might be able to play like queen c two or maybe rook b three to defend everything, but. That's one of the more active tries I see at the moment. Bishop e4 could also be played right now. I'm trying to get him to take so we can take with the d-pawn and then attack the d-pawn with our queen. But I think first of all, well, if I play knight a to e7, I definitely can't play bishop e4 anymore. I need my rook to help defend. could also play this knight to e7, but then I don't have... As great a pressure on d4. Hmm. So let's say knight a to e7, b4, a takes b4, a takes b4, rook to a3. Let's say queen to c2. Hmm. So b5 is coming soon after that. I'm not sure I have enough activity there. It might just be a little bit worse.
It could also take on d3 first and then play the knight here, but again, b4 is coming. It's similar. Okay, I'm going to play this. One idea I have is after b4 to trade, and then after rook a3, maybe think about taking on d3 and then playing knight g6 so that the other knight can come back to e7 in the event of b5. He might have a space advantage on the queen side, but I think we remain pretty solid. He may be hesitant to play b4 too, because I, I think he kind of will understand that I want to keep my rook on a8 and have the ability to infiltrate should he ever play that b4 move. Hmm, he takes voluntarily on g6. Okay, so now key decision, do I take with the pawn or with the knight? I kind of like pawn takes, just so my knight has access to f5. So I'm leaning towards that. Yeah, let's do that. That also solves my back rank problem in one fell swoop. On g6, like he might be able to play g3 somewhere down the line and stop my knight from ever using the h4 or f4 squares. It just feels more natural to try to direct the knight at f5. I'm not sure I would have played bishop takes g6 if I were him. So again, if b4, let's look at that move again. So b4, we trade on b4. Um, let's say rook a3. Hmm. Rook a3, and he protects it. Let's say queen c2, maybe knight f5. And then if b5 ever, the fate of d4 is questionable. I might be able to take that pawn. I might also make, be able to play knight a5 and try to get the knight into c4. Okay, so let's take that pawn. And rook a3, gain the tempo. What about rook a3, rook b3? Do we care about that? Rook a3, rook b3, maybe queen a8. b5. Then I can trade on b3 and play knight a5 and get my knight into c4, as I desired. So rook a3, rook b3. Queen a8. Hmm. Or knight f5 directly. I mean, knight f5 directly, there's a lot to be said about that too. And then if b5, knight a5. If knight f5, I don't know, queen b3, then d4 will be loose. Also, we can take that bishop on e3 at any time. Yeah, let's do that. Let's play knight f5 right away. Not sure about the rook infiltration. I'm not sure that's as annoying as I initially thought it would be. Gotta watch our time. We're at 620. He's got a full five minute advantage on us. Or actually, four minute advantage. Sorry, guys, I can't math right now. <laughs> it's pretty late at night. I'll actually be posting this video like right after I record it. It's uh, looking at my clock. It's eleven twenty three p.m. Queen d two. So just reinforcing the bishop. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better about um, the possibility of b5 in the future. I think having knight a5 and then knight to c4 with tempo is rather nice. Maybe queen d7. Just connect the rooks together. Seems like a pretty reasonable move. I could bring this rook in again, but I don't think it's good to do so. Yeah, let's just play this kind of quickly too. g4 is never that big of a deal. We can always take the bishop. I think my position is reasonable. He has a slight space advantage, but I have a very compact position. And only like a couple weaknesses, like d5 is a weakness, b7 is a weakness. 
but it's hard for him to get at. I mean, he'd especially like to attack d5, but only his knight is on that pawn right now. And it's hard for him, especially after this move that he played, it's hard for him to get his queen involved in attacking that square. Yeah, I think we're good here. If rook a1, he loses b4, so he can't play that move. He kind of has a dilemma with this b-pawn, actually. I don't think he really wants to advance it either, because of knight a5 into c4. Plays g4. I thought he might do something like that. So, knight h4 or take on e3? What's better? And taking on e3 seems more natural. If I take e3, he takes it the pawn. My bishop is kind of having a hard time doing anything, though. Maybe rook a3 at that point. Yeah, actually, that's that's a pretty decent plan. Let's do that. We'll see if he takes with the rook or the pawn. I'm thinking he'll take with a pawn. He actually takes with the rook. Hmm. So maybe he'll try to double on the e-file? I still feel like taking here, but not positive. b6 also seems like a reasonable move too. Okay, let's take. If pawn takes, I might play b6 in a bid to break up this structure, like fight back a little bit. So let's say pawn takes b6. If b5, I would have knight a5. Keeps surprising me. He takes here. So rookie 8 is obvious. It gains a tempo, but is it any good? Rook a3. Once again, I have that move if I want it. b6, I also have that. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to play b6. b6, b5, knight a5, knight e5. Is that a problem? Take, queen takes. He's hitting d5 twice. That could be an issue. Maybe I want to throw in rook e8 before playing b6. Yeah, that might be a better option. Okay, we'll play that tempo move. I don't think rook a3 was anything. Anything special. I wonder if queen d3, if I play b6, if queen b5 is problematic. Uh, it might be a moot point. All right, so undermining move coming up. If g5 is ever played, h3 becomes weak. So in fact, g5 I could take on h3 right away because I'd be attacking his knight. Three and a half minutes remaining. If queen a2, we always have queen uh, rook to d8 if needed. To defend also d4 hanging, we'd probably be more likely to take that pawn, actually. Let's pre of this capture. I'd say so far the game has been pretty balanced. I mean, arguably Rico Taro is like keeping a small advantage throughout just based on the space that he has. But I think slowly we're neutralizing it. I think these exchanges um, are fine for black because we had a slightly cramped position. So trading should benefit us. He hasn't really shown a way to attack D5 more than he already is. Okay, king up. Useful move. Not going to bother us too much, I don't think. So if I take, he takes the d-pawn, we could always just swap there. That's no problem. Okay, let's take then. Pretty sure he'll take with the b-pawn.
He might be getting into his head to play g5 pretty soon, just to cramp our bishop. Could bring the rook back here. It's not doing anything on the e-file anymore. Yeah, let's play the rook back over. That also takes away queen a2 as a resource. So that's helpful. The e-file was just kind of a dead open file. Likewise, I think the b-file is kind of dead. Like, I don't really see anything great about coming into b7 for him. If he had, like, two moves, rook b7 followed by knight b5, maybe. But if rook b7 right now, I can repel it with queen c8. If queen to um, b2, maybe knight takes d4. Eh, that might require some... Calculation, because he could perhaps take on d5 then. Plays queen f4. Maybe g5 is a good way to try to deflect his queen. Also, there's rook a3. Rook a3, maybe knight b5 is what he's going for. I think it could be. What about g5? g5, knight takes, and then take on d4. It's pretty good, actually. Yeah, let's go g5. We'll kick his, his queen away. Trying to capitalize on the deflection possibility. I really got to speed up. Two and a half minutes is not a lot. I might have to defend this pawn now, especially if his queen comes back. But I think with his d-pawn also being weak, it's... Uh, Kind of a lose-lose situation for him. Queen e3. Let's just play g6. Simple move. Give our king the uh, g7 square to go up to. Again, rook a3 could be played if we want to pin him along the third rank. He's defending his pawn. Okay, let's play rook a3. Ooh, okay. <laughs> did I blunder knight takes d5? I think I did. Ah, oh, <laughs> I saw knight e4, and I could um, take with the pawn on e4, and if queen takes a3, I can take on f3, and I get two minor pieces. But knight takes d5 is a nice tactical shot he has here. I completely blundered that move. Attacking f6. Whoops, I hope he, hope he doesn't see it. Because <laughs> if he does see it, I have to take on d5 and then pray that I have enough counterplay. But I'll be down the exchange plus pawn. I won't have enough counterplay. Yeah, this is a loose piece. Easy tactic to overlook in a in a fast game too. I also I can't even like defend both these pieces. I have to give something up. Yeah, if knight takes d5, uh rook takes e3, he has knight takes f6 with check, king g7, let's say, and knight takes d7, he's up a piece. Okay, I'm going to pre-move this move just in case he plays it. <laughs> As one of these moves, like, right after I play it, I'm like, oh, something's wrong with that move. Again, I hope he doesn't see it, but I think he might. Then again, if he hasn't seen it by now, um, maybe he won't see it. You never know. So after knight takes d5, queen takes d5, rook takes a3, I can't play knight takes d4 because I'm kind of putting myself in a pin there. So I'd probably have to play like, I don't know, knight e7 or something. Try to get my knight over to f4. Or maybe knight d8 is decent. And try to go, yeah, knight d8 might be the best way to try to resist. Try to go knight e6 and then to f4. It's not pretty, but maybe I can get lucky. That'll be funny if he plays knight takes d5 and I pre-moved queen takes d5. <laughs> Hmm, he missed it. Okay. Lucky us. All right, so he's attacking the rook, however. I think rook b3 is decent. We want to stay on his knight if possible. 
So we're going to pay attention to the knight takes d5 tactic, though. We don't want any other mishaps. Like, if he plays rook here, I'd definitely be paying attention to that. All right, so we move the queen, maybe rook b4, to further attack this pawn. Yeah, let's do that. If queen a2, trying to counterattack d5, I think rook c4 is possible. He's kind of going passive now. He's going to bring the knight over. You know, I like this maneuver of the knight to um, the e6 square. I think I'll do that. If I do that, is queen d2 a problem, though? It might be. Yeah, it would be. Knight d8, queen d2, and he's attacking both the loose rook. I don't know, but I have queen b5. Okay, well, let's give it a shot. Even that's dicey, though. Queen d2, queen b5, knight c3, maybe? With knight takes d5 ideas on the horizon? Hmm. I can go queen a4. Queen a4 again, knight here, though. I might just sack a pawn. How much is g5 really worth, anyways? All right, I'm just going to sack a pawn. We'll take on g5 and then play knight e6. And go from there. He does have a centralizing move, queen e5, though. Not sure I should have played knight d8, having seen queen d2 even. <laughs> it's just like, couldn't resist playing it. Okay, so maybe knight f4 is what he's going to be trying for. Let's play the rook into a2. Yeah, knight f4, we're kind of getting to a heavy piece position. Let's just check take and do, go in for this. I think queen here is fine. He's up a pawn, but uh, might be a long, long time before he's able to convert that. At least I hope so. We're pretty active at the moment. I don't know, maybe he can bring his rook over. B1, yeah. Hmm. Mm, I might trade. Check. I'm going to trade queens. We're going to go for this ending. Like, E3 will be a threat after that. Also, I can try to get behind his D-pod. It's an idea as well. Yeah, let's get behind the D-pod right away. If he defends it with rook b4, maybe g5 to keep his king out. I feel like I always end up in these pawn down uh, positions. <laughs> these pawn down endings. Uh, okay, he's going to let us take here. guess he's going to bring his rook in to attack that pawn. Okay, let's go here and attack f2. Check. Okay, we'll pre move this capture. Actually, do I want to do that? Time warning. I'm going to come back here, actually, and defend the C pawn. 18 seconds left, though. Let's go rookie seven soon, maybe. Mm, G5 might be decent now. Hmm. Check. Um, all right. We got to go after some pawns on the swing. We got to try to get something going with those pawns. Let's pre move this capture. 10 seconds. Not much at all. Take that. 
All right, now we're getting G5, at least. Check. Hmm. Surprised he played it like this. Very surprised he played it like this. Check. 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 Not good the way he played it. Check. I think we're going to win on time. Check. Wow. Okay. Messy game towards the end. Yeah, he didn't play that rook ending well in the final stages, but it was very much a time scramble. I mean, it seemed like he was keeping decent control all the way up through, like, right here. I think he should just take on c7 and not bother with h4. Like, rook takes c7, rook takes h3, and, yeah, start advancing his pawn. Let's go back and take a look. Turn the engine on here. So, here's, like, the first position in the game where I wasn't completely sure what to do, because I'm used to, like, the tension being resolved earlier. But um, bishop g4, take d6, we took with the e pawn. And it seemed, like, fairly... Okay. Because I know these symmetrical positions can be um, slowly equalized for black. If you're patient enough. But he always had a pull. I think he did a good job of managing his space advantage. It was always like a little bit better. Rook b1, I played bishop g6. Knight a to e7. I said I didn't necessarily like him taking on g6, but maybe it's fine. The computer says it's much better to take with the knight compared to the pawn. I know um, I probably play h takes g6 too often in positions because in the Scandinavian that happens a lot. So like I have that built in um, to my chess memory banks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe knight takes g6. Freeing up the e7 square for the other knight was a better move. Then b4. So the computer thinks that white should wait to play b4 and instead prefer bishop f4 or g4. Okay, so don't open up the A file quite yet. Yeah, actually, that's a good point, because what do I do with this knight now? He's threatening g5. I have to do something awkward, like knight c8. But now b4 comes under improved circumstances. He has even more space than before. Okay, so that's why I should have preferred knight takes g6, so I don't run into this coordination problem. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. So this happened, and I think the position should be okay for me. B6, we took on C5. It just seemed kind of level the whole time. I played G5 trying to deflect. We brought the queen back, played G6. I don't know if I need this move. It just kind of felt natural to uh, give my king access to the G7 square. But at the same time, it undefends the bishop on F6, which could have uh, backfired on me severely right here if he had found knight takes D5. Yeah. He didn't find it, fortunately. Um, yeah, I just completely overlooked that shot. On knight e4, I'm good. Knight e4, with the same idea, I can take here. And then um, I get two minor pieces. And we're doing awesome. But uh, knight takes d5, we have no remedy for that move. So I was going to play queen takes d5, queen takes a3, knight d8, and try to shoot the knight into f4. But it should be losing. Yeah, rook a1, so that if knight e6, he can play queen a8 with check and trade the queens. Yeah, it should be losing. But um, queen c1, rook b3. I think it was actually kind of egregious that I played knight d8, even having seen queen d2. But I really wanted to do something active. And um, yeah, that's just like, that's just not a disciplined move by me. I saw the refutation and I still played it. It's just, <laughs> what can you say about that? Um, I should have played like something slower. Yeah, king g7, uh, maybe a queen move, like queen e8, I think I saw the engine recommend. The computer even thinks it's very slightly better for black now. Maybe the queen invading the e4 is a decent plan so that we can induce a trade and then d4 is weak if this knight moves away. So, yeah, when you get into time pressure, you start uh, giving in to your instincts oftentimes and you don't, you don't think rationally. So here I should have preferred rook b3. And what if knight takes g5 then? I guess same thing. I'll probably just be down a pawn, huh? What about knight c6? Knight c6 take here. Ah, okay, so on knight, knight c6, knight takes g5, I can take on d4 and regain the pawn. And then I'm hitting c5 too. So that one's okay. But yeah, as played, he's pretty much just up a pawn, isn't he? 
And I even underestimated Check. like the major piece ending. I was like, ah, oh, this is okay. Like he's only up a pawn, but I think we can defend. But actually, after rook b1, there's a clear threat to my c7 pawn. And it'd be terrible to have to play a move like rook a7 to defend. So Check. I went for a queen trade, but this ending might be losing. Looks like he played it pretty well, too. At first, I was kind of surprised that he um, would bring his king out like that and let me take the d pawn, but the c pawn's a goner, and that's Check. the most important thing. Yeah, and then I changed my mind. I was originally going to play rook takes h3, but with his king being so close to assist his pawn and me not even having a potential pass pawn over here on the king side, it's probably better to try to hold out this way. I thought g5 would be the way to go right now to shut down f6 as a potential source of play. Yeah, that's plus four and a half. I don't know if black can save this, this ending. Definitely not now. Maybe earlier in the major piece ending, I could have potentially saved it. But yeah, now he started giving up the pawns in a weird Check. way. Now it should be probably a draw. Um, hmm. Yeah, c6, take, even here, just play a rook move. Rook b7. I did see this, that if I take, he has c7, and I can't even stop the pawn anymore. Rook f5, oops. Rook Check. f5, king d6, rook Check. f6, king d7, and he's promoting. Yeah, so all he has to do is move this away. It's kind of like he he knew he was going to lose a pawn or two, but he wasn't sure like how in what manner he wanted to do it. Usually in those cases, it's, it's best just to not play any pawn moves at all. You should just let them go take it, because um, capturing moves take time. And if you're like playing on the side of the board where you know you're going to give up a pawn anyways, uh, it's kind of a simplification, but I would argue that you should focus on the side where you're stronger. So you see this a lot with like pass pawns. Um, when sides create like competing pass pawns, it's usually better just to focus on your own pawns rather than trying to stop your opponent's pawns. Because if you do that, like they gain the momentum in the position and then you're often unable to stop them anyways. Yeah, Check. kind of an unbelievable flag I got, especially Check. considering that I was just down time the whole time. Check, 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 check. Yeah. Just complete confusion at the end. So yeah, crazy game, um, especially towards the end when we survived after making some pretty big mistakes. I mean, definitely rook a3 was a mistake, allowing knight takes d5 right here. And then uh, knight d8 was also kind of a mistake. I was just fixated on the knight d8 to e6 to f4 idea, and that clouded my judgment. But he played pretty well. He just misplayed the end game in time pressure. All right. Um, oh, I was going to check the best list, too, because I haven't done this for a while. But yeah, we're sitting here at 2363 after that game, and we've got a 23-point lead on Bones, Grandmaster Bones. I think he's a German Grandmaster, Frank Holschke. And um, yeah, I hope I hope more uh, strong players will gradually begin to play the 15-minute pool. It's probably not going to happen because the 15-minute pool has been around forever. But uh, hey, we can <laughs> we can at least hope. Maybe they'll watch my videos and get inspired. So hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll be back tomorrow with another Snitter game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.